Good evening, everyone. I'm Taya Boateng, the director for the Roundabout Youth Ensemble production this summer of Hidden Truth. Roundabout Youth Ensemble is a student-led theater company modeled after Roundabout Theater's professional theater production process. This summer, high school students from across the five boroughs came together and collaborated over Zoom with the guidance of our wonderful teaching artists to create the production, which you will be seeing shortly. I admit coming into this process was intimidating because of the given circumstances, but this environment still allowed me to explore my theatrical creativity while simultaneously serving as a learning experience, as I'm sure it was for the rest of the ensemble. Through Zoom, the ensemble was able to create in their own spaces in the midst of a pandemic. Although everyone was limited in space and resources, everyone was still able to come together and execute the production you'll be watching shortly. We'd like to thank our major donors and members of our board and leadership council. Roundabout Youth Ensemble is possible through the support of the Pinkerton Foundation, Stalin E. Summerfield Foundation, and the JPB Foundation. The whole ensemble really enjoyed creating and working on this play for you, which questions the concept of inferiority and why it is needed. We hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. immunity to this virus. It's a new virus. It's a pandemic strain of a virus we haven't seen. We are now entering what will be the crucial defining 15-day period as it, as it relates to this virus. New York City is the center of this crisis. This dangerous health crisis could dovetail quickly into a political crisis, already feeling economic ramifications of it all. Cuomo of New York announced uh, that the infection rate is low enough that all school districts across New York State can vaccine. open for in-person classes. Well, is the pandemic finally over? Vaccine cures millions across New York. New Tell York wants the epicenter. Travel between boroughs is now available. Travel to reopening. Schools in Manhattan are now considering the inclusion of outer borough students. Can we really go back to a pre-pandemic world? Mutations. Dangerous. Those who had the virus seem to have developed mutations. Law now calls for including outer girls students. In the Is this schools. reunification another major problem? Mutations have become risk? abilities. No real testing yet. Mutations are they dangerous? I feel like my life is missing something. Could it be power? Could it be excitement? Could it be love? Could it be more control? Could it be change? Could it be Could wealth? It be Could it be a new iPhone? I can't pinpoint exactly what it is. Are my actions driven by love or by fear? I'd say they're driven by the fear of losing the ones I love, or even worse, losing myself. Will I lose myself by going against everything I've ever known? Will I lose the ones I love by going against everything they believe in? Or will I lose everything for standing up for what's right. But I'm pretty sure whatever is missing is outside of my perfectly built cage. My life is a cage, asked as a teenage dream. You might ask yourself, how could a penthouse be compared to a cage? Well, maybe my spacious pink room or home theater don't resemble a cage in any way, but my cage is built in my mind, a mental cage which I can't seem to escape. I admit I have privileges, materialistic privileges, privileges which don't mentally stimulate me in any way, privileges that create some sort of invisible barrier between me and others, 
privileges that create a soundproof bubble protecting me from the outside world? Privileges which strip me of my ability to truly be free. What good is wealth when I can't do as I please? What good is this privilege if I can't love as I please? And what good is this privilege if I'll forever be pulled back by my father's invisible chains of ignorance and judgment? The only thing left for me to do is dream. Dream of a day where I can spread my wings and soar. A day where I could think for myself. A day where I could actually make a change in this horrible world. That's the day I will truly be free. Why am I being judged for unapologetically being the way I am? I've worked in education most of my life. I've built my school from the ground up and I've devoted myself to my profession. If I feel certain measures are needed in my school community, I will implement them regardless of what others think. I'm not completely oblivious to the murmurs and whispers among students comparing me to the likes of Hitler, or calling me a heartless monster or a dictator. But I will continue to rule as I please. At the end of the day, it is my utmost duty to protect these students from the dangers that they might not be aware of. These dangers are present within the school, living and breathing and taking up space with their mutations and malicious intentions, waiting for a chance to strike and corrupt the rest. Can I really be blamed for wanting to get rid of these transfer students? These, these outsiders that destroy my school from the inside. Survivors like me don't have it easy. We're strategically labeled in order to separate us from the rest of the population or protect them from us. Protect them from our presumed psychological abilities that come with our mutation. Ever since that great pandemic of 2020, life hasn't been the same. Ever since that year, I've been placed on the outside looking in. Ever since that virus, those who are infected are now burdened with mutations. Ever since then, those in power feel entitled to treat my part of the population, the survivors, as it was sort of, sort of plague or vermin. Suddenly, we've become less than human to them. Those in power have been getting away with their crimes against the mutated defenseless and poor, using their useless policies and tactics to get rid of us all. It's an exhausting life. But why do we as the victims have to endure this pain? What did I do to, de to deserve a life of restless punishment and disappointment? When will things ever change? When will I live to see a day in which I don't, wish, I don't want to be anything or anybody else? When will I live my life the way I want without any limitations or barriers? Why should I have to wish to be considered normal? When will this nightmare end? I'm tired. Tired of being the person everyone expects me to be. I have an untapped potential that others can't see. I'm not just an errand boy or her friendly brain that after that opens doors for girls. I'm an intelligent man. I'm not concerned about basic problems like passing finals or picking the right homecoming dance. I create the complexities and hardships of the real world. I can handle the outside world. I'm more than ready for the real world. But is the world ready for me? Is it ready for what I have to offer? Is it ready to bow down to my feet? Only time will tell. I will never understand why there's so much evil in this world. There's so much unnecessary hate and judgment and, and not enough love and acceptance. So I have made it my mission to inspire change in any way I can. Something other people should consider doing instead of focusing on their own personal gain or ignorance. 
I'm only 16, and I wish I could do more than being president of the student council or, or volunteering for community service or befriending those who have been judged and rejected by others. But for now, it's the most I can do. But I'm willing to do more. I'm willing to do so much more. Anything it takes to make this horrid reality change. Yeah, I know I'm seen as that annoying feminist that loves to ramble on about how men are entitled. About how their huge egos is what makes the world more unfair than it already is. But did I lie? I mean, every single person taking advantage of their power is a male. They all feel so high and mighty as if they can do whatever they want. Have, have you even heard of a female dictator? Probably not, which shows you how much better off we would be if we were just ruled by more than one gender. <sighs> Misogynistic men are like the modern day plague. Now hear me out. The full package usually comes with anti-feminism, privilege, an extremely boosted ego, and racism. Four diseases in one. And one day I'll make sure that ceases to exist. I don't have many unforgettable traits or a formidable presence. I'm merely there, an invisible girl, once again, placed on the outside looking in, a mere stranger or a passing visitor. Descriptions which don't highlight the type of person I aspire to be. I want to be unforgettable, appreciated, formidable, and unique, a presence that shakes up with excitement and leaves you yearning for more. But for now, I'm just me. Stacks upon stacks of paperwork before me. I joined the world of education for one purpose. Elevation requires separation. Laws, budget costs, new policies are all the major components of my daily headaches. To make sure that this system doesn't fail students the way it did to me, there needs to be changes. And life isn't always fair. It's always something to sign, a new proposition being made. Rowdy teens complaining about a system that is yet to fail them and new dangers being introduced to our younger generations. Adjustments. This system was made to teach those generations that, in fact, life has never been fair. The world isn't black and white. It never seems to stop. Not until there is change. And a strive for equality. An equality that has never been seen before. There's no good or bad, and quite frankly, there's so much hiding within the grays. There's no creation of a magic spell or potion that will satisfy and fulfill everyone's needs, but until there is, keep the stacks of paperwork coming in. Imagine there was such a thing. What would you desire to get rid of? Not living your life to the fullest. Not being alone. Being lied to. Never getting away. I have always been known as the daughter of Principal Cypress. It has pretty much been only him and I my whole life. Ever since mom passed away. He's tried to be both parental roles for me and he's given me everything I could ever need. And he loves me in his own overprotective helicopter parent way. <laughs> I'm so grateful for everything he's provided for me, but I hope that one day he finally stops seeing me as some fragile little girl and lets me venture out into the real world and become the person I want to be. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Thank you for coming today. I believe we're all aware of a certain population infiltrating our schools, transfer students, many of which were our survivors are coming from all over the boroughs. We have two new transfer students this year alone, and it is unclear the rate that they will keep coming. And if any of them have it, who knows what they could do? It's nothing more than uncertainty for now. I don't see why we should be so concerned about it. These potential 
abilities pose a major threat to our normal students and the normalcy of our system of education. They could possibly lead our students down dark paths with their malicious intentions. The law states that we must educate all students in New York. That includes students in every borough, Bernard. Don't you see that the massive intermixing of these students can be a danger? These boroughs where they derive from are zones with the highest infection rates. Do you remember how disastrous the impacts of the virus were in these? What do you propose we do about this issue, Bernard? Law may tell us we have to educate them, but the way we do it and where we do it is up to us. We are the ones responsible for the futures of the new generations. They don't have to interact between each other and spread out in our schools. What exactly would you change? We'd start by implementing policies which limit or prohibit the mixing of normal students from the mutated population. We, under no circumstances, can let our children be manipulated or possibly... But definitely ensure their safety. We'll have to put it up to a vote. I'm sure you'll make the right decision since, after all, parents and students in the state of New York are depending on us to trust by allowing these transfer students to mingle with our normal students. This is truly for the best. I'll be awaiting your final decision on the day of my beloved daughter's birthday. You are all cordially invited. Thank you for your proposal, Bernard. We will strongly consider what you've said. It has been my utmost pleasure. Oh, Bianca, nothing means to talk to you. Oh, hey Ian. I haven't seen you recently. What's up with you? Um, I just so happens I've been helping Principal Cypress lately. Really? Doesn't he seem kind of weird to you? Weird? Cre creepy? <laughs> Whatever. I'm getting his good graces. Don't you see? He's got power. Chianca, think of how he can help me. Help us. <laughs> They can pass all their classes while even trying. You can take any colleges you want. I don't want to get mixed into whatever it is you're doing. Oh, come on. Don't be stupid. This is a great opportunity. My gut is telling me otherwise. So what's the issue? As far as I can see, this is an easy way to climb to the top. That's the issue. Your obsession with power and getting ahead. Oh, you just don't know what's good for you, Bianca. No, it's called having morals. Sorry, I don't want to be a pawn on a chessboard. We're all pawns. I thought it's better to be the most powerful in the game. Prince was psyched this is our chance at that. Hey, anyway. Well, he's got this big plan in the works. I don't know some meeting with the board. I'm talking about keeping an eye out for one showing signs of ability. I'm just keeping an eye out for it. We wouldn't want someone in our school manipulating us. Now would we be? Oh, so you're a spy. How lovely. Listen, I came to offer you a chance to get in on this. I'm not going to take any crap from you for trying to help. You can keep the offer to yourself. What happened to my friend needs to be there for me? Are you really going to quit now? I'm only trying to help you out here. What happens if you do that to me? I'm still your friend, but... So help is just on my friend. She do what's right and help. Okay, I will. I need to come around. I have something in mind for you. Come on, hurry up already. I want to 
wonder what Bernard's beloved daughter is up to right now. Surely nothing good if she and her pesky friend plan on mingling with the infected ones. Well, girls will be girls. What is taking you so long? I don't know about this, man. It just doesn't feel right. I'm going behind my father's back, and I don't really know anyone at this party other than him. Him? Oh, him. So I'll take a Prince Charming and get you out of your castle, eh? Listen, are you sure you're not just afraid of your dad finding out you're going to a mixed party? Him alone should make going to the party worth it. He would definitely be pissed at me. If he thinks I'm sleeping over at your house, I guess he would not. That's the spirit. Don't let being afraid of your dad hold you back from the biggest party of the year. These are your teenage years. You should cherish them, you know? Let's go now, Desi. I know you can't wait to see him. Right, already. Let's go, Em. Oh, you have our masks, right? Oh, all right. We have to take the bus to get to the party. I'm looking forward to my first ride now. Dad never really lets me take the bus. Oh, hush. You're not missing much of anything anyways. The bus is not that fun. I don't want to experience it. Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> Isn't this a danger to public health? I heard this is the best party of the year. You gonna come in? Yeah, it is. And it has the best music. Sounds lit. It is. Oh, what are you even doing around people? Hey, Des. Was the show if you'd be mate joining us tonight? I'm already of course I made it. I wouldn't miss it. Ah, the lovebirds. I'm gonna give them their space. Glad you could make it here. But how'd you get here? <laughs> I got here by the bus. It was a really amazing ride. I can't believe my father neglected me and experienced on myself. Uh, I wouldn't say all that. You can drop the private school vocabulary and head on inside. Wait, for example. Your friend? She's probably on the inside waiting for you. Don't worry. My friend's inside too. Oh, your friend? Yeah, my closest friend, Chris. Someone I would trust with my life if I had to. I've been meaning to introduce you to him. Well, let's get to meeting him then. I'm glad you made it. I was almost starting to think you actually went in that school. Wait, do you? What? Don't listen to him. He's known to be random at times. A little crazy too. Hey, crazy. I've heard that. Crazy, huh? We have an interesting friend of mine. Interesting, but a good friend nonetheless. <laughs> And speaking of good friends, I'm gonna go find Emily and keep her out of trouble. Go on. We can't have Emily going wild. I heard Em could be quite the party animal. And Lord knows how much I have to deal with when it comes to you. Oh, come on, man. I'm not that much trouble. I beg to differ. Yeah, yeah. You picked a good one, huh? I really hope I had it off with it. I'm rooting for you. But you already know how your relationship would be. I mean, she's practically off limits, being the principal's daughter and all. Yeah, I know, I know. But I can't help the way I feel about it. And I still want to give it a chance. 
you still should. Just be careful, yeah? Yeah, I will. Oh, I can't think Ian's making me do this. So, the faster I get this done, the better. Hey, you're Destiny and Emily, right? Yeah, hi. You're Bianca, the senior, right? That's me. Wow, the senior, you're so lucky to give you cool things. You can be in my shoes soon enough. Time flies. I hope so. I don't know how much more math I can take. Principal Cypress is really strict with grades in our school. I know exactly what you mean, believe me. But that leaves me curious. How did that same trick Principal Cypress let his daughter come to a mixed party? Oh, but he didn't. I had to lie. He thinks we're staying over at my house, but look where we are. I got fried the bus. Wait. Do you seriously have never gone on public transportation before? Never had the chance to do so before. Or you've never been broke enough Either to way, <laughs> this is one party I could not let her miss. Oh really? How come? Well, there's a certain special someone she wanted to see. Hmm. Ooh, a crush. Who's the lucky guy? It's Amari. He's over there with Chris. She's totally in love with him. I am not. Amari? Huh. I wonder if things can work out with the considering he's not white. Race matters only to my father, but not to me. Aren't you afraid? Of what? He could be one of the ones with the abilities. He's a survivor. Aren't you? Yes. So, should we be afraid of you? No. If he is one with the ability, I don't care. My father and I are not the same. Besides, I like him. I can't help that I like him. No offense, but even though it might not matter to you, your decision to pursue something with Amari doesn't only affect you. He literally just got a scholarship to our school. I'm sure you can't relate, but haven't you thought about how he could lose that? The more he'll get is a ground into the baddie, but he could lose a valuable education if anyone thinks he's manipulating you because he has it. I understand what you mean, and you're right about the consequences, but I thought about all that, and if Omari is going to make the risk so annoying. If he feels the same way about me, then I'll make sure nothing bad ever happens to me because I really do care. Well, then who am I to send you away? Go get your man. Aw, <laughs> oh, how sweet. Young love is blooming. Chose the wrong place to bloom if you ask me. I smell a young tragedy in the works. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending this event tonight. I've come to bring attention to a problem that is approaching our schools. Some would call them transfer students. Students from the outer boroughs come into our pristine schools with their abilities, acting as though they are normal. But dare I say they are parasites? Ones with the mutation that gives them the ability to rob someone of their own free will. I say they go back to where they came from, to where they belong, on the outskirts of the barrier. These aren't people that deserve an education. These are monsters. No, 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 that's all wrong. <sighs> Heartless creatures that could tempt anybody astray without knowing it. No, no, not that either. And first it will be our schools, then they'll want to move here, take our jobs, destroy our beliefs. No, that's still too radical. Isn't Bernard's home just lovely? Oh, it's alright. 
Although it seems the principal has had better days. It's way more than all right. The principal doesn't look too bad himself. Looks like someone wants to be Bernard's next wife. I do not. Hush at last. What is Ian doing here? What is this boy up to now? Yeah, Ian. Did you bring what I asked you to? Of course, sir. Here's the point all the students in there for look. There's an X mark the ones who have it. Not too many potential candidates. That's relieving to hear. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. But, um, sir, we're getting reports that your daughter attended a party last night. My daughter? My destiny? She said she was sleeping over at Emily's house. I know how it may sound, but two other students saw with their own eyes. And the worst part is, he was hanging with one with, with the ability. Are you saying that one of those are manipulating my daughter? Who would do anything like that? You know how the Archons were Cypress. They're ruthless and heartless. They take advantage of anyone who offers them an open arm and drains them of everything they have. You're not wrong. But how dare they lay a finger on my daughter, lead her in the wrong. What's their name? <laughs> His name, sir? Zamari. I want you to find out more about this student. As you wish comes from Cyprus. Ooh, Destiny's in trouble. How will she get out of this one? Her first step should be social distancing from that little boy she likes. Don't be so pessimistic. After all, the heart has a mind of its own. Well, then she needs to change her mind. Shh! Here she comes. Time seems to fly by in this place. Shh! I want to hear what the child is saying! Hey, stranger, what's up? Sure, where do you want to meet? Got it. See you there. I'm sorry to say this, but I have a few important things to sort out at school. I should be back by dinner. Oh, oh, that's all right. I'll be good, Dad. You know, I don't like leaving you alone. Maybe you can join in and be my assistant for the day. No, I'll be okay, Dad. Besides, I have to invite Emily over because we have an important biology project to work on. I'll call every hour to check in. I already called the maid so she can stay here with you until I get back home. And I'll call Emily's parents to let them know she'll be here. Dad, I don't need the maid. I have everything I need here, and if I get hungry, I can just make myself some lunch. I'll be fine. No, the maid will be here to watch over you girls, since clearly you two are not to be trusted going off on your own. Okay, Dad. I'll call you whenever I need anything, and I'll call the maid if I get hungry. I'll wait for the maid to get here first. And by the time I get back from work, I expect to see your completed assignments and projects. Okay, Dad. I'll see you later. I'm here for anything you need, Miss Cypress. Um, would you want me to make you a meal, or...? Actually, I'm really tired. I'm gonna go get some sleep, and I'll eat later. Wake me up only when Emily gets here. Got it. I'll be in the kitchen if you need anything. Thank you. Hey, Em, I need a huge favor. I need to meet Omari, and I told my dad that we would be doing a project together here. Pretty please, I'll owe you for the rest of my life. <laughs> I love you, Emily. Okay, so you'll have to distract the maid and make sure she thinks I'm still asleep. Um, my dad will be calling in and checking every hour, and I need some sort of project to show him when he gets back. And did I already mention how much I love you and owe you for this? This boy, Omari, is trouble. She seems to go be going on her own free will. Oh, you don't know that. He cannot be trusted. When are you going to stop rooting for him, Smith? Never. Now let's see how this romantic evening unfolds. Fine.
Hey, Des. Glad you made it here. Hi, Mari. I mean, me too. <laughs> Although I don't have much time. I'd like to show you around and maybe take you to an art gallery nearby. Wait, you're into art too? Yeah, I'm into all forms. Music, painting, sculpting, acting, and dance. You sure are full of surprises, Omari. <laughs> I hope to get my art displayed in the gallery one day. I actually have a piece ready for submission, but I'd like for you to see it first. I feel extremely honored, and I can now brag about how I was one of the first people who saw the earliest work of a modern-day Picasso. Real funny. Wait, is, is that me? I've been so inspired by your beauty since the first time I see this. You're a living piece of artwork. It's okay if you don't feel comfortable with me submitting this. I have a... No, Mari. This is the most amazing and romantic thing anyone has ever done for me. I can't believe you did this. It must have taken a long time and it must have put so much effort into it. And it was it must have taken it. you. I enjoyed making it because I really do like you. And I know you feel the same way about me. Was it that obvious? Yes. Do you want to be my girlfriend? Yes, I would love to. All right, cool. Let's go. What? Where? We have to go tell my father. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. He'll hate me. But he doesn't know you. <laughs> he doesn't have to know me. You will automatically hate me and judge me. My biggest flaw is my mutation, and that's all he's going to see. But I don't care about those things. You're an amazing person, and that's all that should matter. Not everybody sees me through your eyes, Des. Not everybody has a heart as pure and compassionate as yours. You are now a part of my life, and my father will have to accept that. And it's better to let him know sooner than later. I guess you're right about that. But I'm letting you do all the talking. It'll be okay. I'll make sure that he'll have to hear us out. Your optimism and determination is impressive. And scary at the same time. Miss Cypress, are you still asleep? Oh crap. Uh, yes. I, I'm very much asleep. You sound very much awake to me. Is everything all right? Yes. Things are very pleasant. Are, are you certain, Miss Cypress? I could bring you a cup of tea or- No, I'm good. Um, I mean, no thank you. Oof. Well, Destiny is asleep, but Emily can still get something to eat. Oh! Miss Emily, I didn't know you were here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Destiny called me over to hang out some time ago. Oh, yes, yeah, she told me. Yeah, but I got hungry, so I'm just gonna go get something from the kitchen. Um, do you allow me, please. Oh, are you sure? Um, I can do this for myself. I mean, it's not like I haven't made at home. Now all of us are rich and fortunate like this. Um, so please, just allow me to do this. Um, I don't need to be doted on, hand and foot. As you wish, Miss Emily. Mr. Cypress! You're home! <laughs> Hi! Uh, Destiny and I are just taking a break from our project. Where's my daughter? Oh, she's napping. Yeah. Really tired after all of that work. Whew. Um, uh, but she should be up soon. I see. Well, I have something for her, so I'll just check in on her. 
Wait, you, you should wait! Yeah, um, after all, do we all need a good rest? I suppose I'll wait a bit longer. Great. Cool. Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna go now. Here you are with Prince Charming, thank God. Listen, your dad is here and he's coming in soon. Thanks again so much, Emily. Yeah, yeah, just remember you owe me. Of course. Great, now get me out of here. Dad, you're back. I see you've woken up. Here you are. What's this? Open it and find out, sweetheart. Oh my god. Dad, this is beautiful. Thank you so much. I love you. Just an early birthday present for my favorite daughter. I'm your only daughter. Which is why I'm putting a lot of work into your birthday event this year. I think I want to go for something a little casual and simple this year. I don't want a big event. Oh, really? Now, where did this come from? I'm getting older, and huge expensive events just don't attract me the way that they used to. Is there something else you need to tell me? Father, this is Omari. Omari? This is the Omari who I've been hearing speculation about. What is this, this abomination doing in my house? I'd like for you to meet him and put aside any racist or ignorant ideas you may have and actually listen to him. It would mean a lot to me because I truly love him, Dad. Please, sir. I don't know what you've heard, but I really like your daughter. And it would mean a lot if you could listen. I will hear nothing of the sort. You're the one who's been manipulating my daughter. I know what you and your kind are. And I know that none of you deserve my attention, much less to set foot on my property. Dad, please listen. I'm begging you. You are a young, beautiful girl. You will not beg because of a person like him. You are so much better than him. Sir, I believe I am a good person and a good influence on your daughter. And whether you like it or not, I will continue to keep seeing her. Good influence? There have been reports of my daughter going to mixed parties. Do you know what that could do to her image? To our family image? Who do you think you are talking to me in this matter? She is my daughter, and if I say she isn't allowed to be with your kind, then she isn't. If you ever try entering my home ever again, I'll make sure to call my good friends down at the police department. Um, I'm sorry. I should go. This is all your fault, Father. You've tried to control me my whole life, and now you've driven away someone I deeply care about. Someone who is good to me. I have no idea how mom ever put up with you. You lack love and substance in your life, and the second that I find love, you decide to call the police just because you don't like his skin color? I did this for your own good. He'll be gone soon enough anyway. One day you'll see that I'm right. No. The real problem is the fact that you're too stubborn and ignorant to see the fault in your ways. it will never change. And I hate you for that. I will not take any more of this disrespect. Go to your room and think about what you said. I will no longer listen to anything you have to say. I don't want anything to do with you. Oh, what's wrong with Destiny? Oh, you know. Regular old daddy issues. She should have never even dared to speak to her respectable father in such a way. I wonder how Principal Sucrose is feeling right now. Oh. Then why don't you go and give Mr. Cypress a long, warm hug and kiss? Stop saying such things. I simply feel sympathy for him. Yeah, if you say so. Um, have you heard the news? What news? 
Everybody's been talking about it. Your dad had a meeting with the members of the Board of Education. Luigi tried to convince them to place policies that separate us from the transfer students. You know, the ones who survived the virus. They think they might be manipulating us. Everybody's talking about it. That's unbelievable. Can you even do something like that? I mean, is that even legal? It's now up to the board members to decide what the fate of the education of the students will be. Honestly, I shouldn't be surprised. Remember how Mari was with me when you left? Yeah. I'm mean, bad. <laughs> he didn't like him. And Amari didn't even get a chance to speak for himself. My dad threatened to call the police, and we know how he's friends with them, and they're so biased and corrupt. It's That's awful, Des. I'm so sorry that happened. It's just the way that he acts is so awful, and sometimes I wish I could just go away. Hmm. Oh, look, here comes Amari now. I wonder if he's heard. Omari, oh, I'm so relieved to see you. Listen, Dad, I'm sorry for leaving out again. No, Omari, I shouldn't have expected him to change, and you shouldn't have had to hear those things. He shouldn't even be saying those things. No, but what can I do? He's so stubborn, he wouldn't listen to me. Hmm, what was that you were saying earlier about running away? Running away? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, just do it, you know, take your chances and go. Yeah, you're right, I was just mentioning that right now. Um, it's starting to sound good, but I couldn't. We all get into trouble and, you know, it's just a risk. I mean, your dad's not the best person to be around and you deserve better than to be surrounded by his ignorance to us. I could get grounded, or worse, expelled, and you guys could get expelled. You know he won't sit around and wait for an apology. I don't want anything bad to happen. Oh. There you are, Amari. I've been looking for you everywhere. Have you heard? Yeah, it's real messed up. I hope it doesn't uh, mess up on you. This is infuriating. Ever since you came to the school, you've been nothing but a good friend to all of us. I would have failed multiple classes if it weren't for you. So how dare people think that by having a mutation, that directly means you're going to harm and manipulate others? I think they're using this as an excuse to push out students coming in from the boroughs. Yes, I completely agree with Chris. I can't stand Principal Cypress! Oh, sorry, Destiny, I forgot. No, it's okay, Chris. I completely agree with what you just said. We think Destiny should run away. He's so controlling. I'd run away, too. Ted is totally a dictator. Try living with him. Anyway, where would I even go? Um, I live in the Bronx, remember? You could come stay with me. That's right, you might not suspect a thing if I'm with you. I can't let you go there alone. Getting there isn't easy nowadays. There's strict procedures that are taken when en whenever entering the subway. Hey guys. Oh, hey Bianca. Are you okay? I'm just a bit tired and stressed because of everything going on. What are you guys chatting about? Just usual, about how Destiny's dad is a total dick disaster. Yeah, and she should totally run away. Something which is way too risky. Whoa. Seriously? Yes, I'm so fed up with him, and don't worry, I can handle myself. You're gonna need company. Plus, he's probably looking for you. You're gonna need some help laying low. Alright, I hadn't thought about that. But I can always just take the bus again. They stop screaming on the buses, so it should be a breeze. Look at you being a rebel. Good for you. Look, I don't know anything that I'll say that will change your mind, but I still can't let you do this alone. Chris and I will help you. Yeah, totally. I can't imagine living in a house with a guy that watches me like the FBI. <laughs> and me too. I'll help if you need any. Uh, but for now, I've got to go. Good luck with your plan. So, 
Are we on? Yeah. I think I could actually do it. Thanks for being so supportive, guys. Finally, there you are. I'm waiting for you since lunch and sweating in two periods. Well, did you at least find anything out? Relax. I had to put an assignment in the library. Anyway, I sat at their table at lunch like you asked. I overheard them talking about Destiny running away. They might be serious about this too. <laughs> good. Very good. Looks like you really can be helpful. What exactly are you planning? Quiet. Professor Cypress put me in charge of keeping an eye on Mari and his daughter, remember? Of this, I doubt they'll be together much longer. You can't... Hush, here they come. Hello, Mari. Destiny. Hey, Bianca. And Ian. Hey, guys. Hey. What's up? Oh. Uh, Chris told me you guys had some plans to get out of town. He told you? Yeah, he mentioned it briefly last period. Aren't you and Chris close with each other? I mean, we're friends, I guess, but I'm not sure why he told you. Was he not supposed to tell me anything? My bad. But he was just very... I did see you both walking together earlier, before he told me. Oh, you know how Chris is. I'm sure he didn't mean to. That's weird. Oh, I think he did. That's weird. Why in the world would he do that? I don't think he'd do anything like that. Chill out. He's starting to like his girlfriend. That does sound a little weird, though. You and Chris are walking together now? Since we're all friends and we were walking in the same direction. Is that a problem? No, it's just that I usually walk you to class. It was a one-time coincidence, Omari. All right. If you say so. But, um, do you mind not telling anyone about this? We're trying to keep a low profile so her dad doesn't find out. Yeah, you know how he is. Totally. Our lips are sealed. Of course. I completely understand. Trust me. Oh, let me know if you need any help at all. Thanks, man. Oh, you want? Yeah, you do. What mischief are they up to now? Kind of cute. I admire their persistence, but this is unacceptable. I'm never having kids. Oh. But what about your future stepdaughter, Destiny? Oh, shush. Of course. I'll always be here for you. Now let's go. I have some serious packing to do. Come on, Tess. You don't need this many clothes. Amari, I need all of this. And besides, we have plenty of time since my dad is sound asleep and he's a deep sleeper. Alright, you say so. Oh, I'm ready. I'm almost done. done. Why is it so hot in here? Don't these windows open? Omari, no! Whoever you are, just know that I keep a rifle next to me while I sleep. Destiny? Destiny, where are you? You better have not taken my only daughter. I've respected you my whole life and owe you so much, but this is for the best. I can't keep living like this any longer. No, no, not my little girl. Wait, could it be that boy? That thing that kidnapped her from her room? That vile creature, how dare he steal my own daughter from my home? Dare I say he use that ability of his to make her follow his plan? 
I need to get her back. No, I need to make him pay as well. So this is where they decided to run off to? She traded her luxurious two-story penthouse for this. Emily's apartment lacks taste. Just look at the color scheme. Are you seriously thinking about that right now? I'm sure it's just a rebellious phase. Well, then she needs to snap out of it. If I lived with someone as intense and annoying as Bernard, I'd run away too. Running away is disrespectful. To you. It is disrespectful. To you. Stop this nonsense. Here comes destiny. She seriously ran away because of that boy. Guess who's officially a runaway now? Yay! I'm so glad you can make it, Des. Welcome to your new home, Des. Let me help you out with all our luggage, huh? Thanks. I've got it. Uh, if you say so, ma'am. Uh, so, what were you guys doing before we got here? Oh, uh, we were just watching Othello on the TV just now. It's actually way more entertaining than I thought it would be. Who knew that Shakespeare could be this interesting? Maybe I would have passed English if I knew it could be this good. Looks like someone's jealous. It doesn't suit him at all. Old do I sense the young tragedy? Oh, hush. He'll get over it. I'm sure. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna go get some chips so we can all sit down and watch it together. Yes, and I'll help you. Sure, that's... So, uh, how was the trip over here? It was fine. Great. Okay, what is going on with Amari? He seems really off. I got no idea. He was fine on the way over here. Ugh, men tend to be like that. They think they own their partners. They always have to be in charge. But no, Amari is not like that. He's probably just stressed because I ran away from home. Well, he better get his act together. It's been a long day. Let's just cut him some slack, Em. I guess. We'll give him some time. Well, they've been watching this for a while. And they sit there and enjoy such a tragic film. It's so depressing. It is originally a Greek tragedy. I'm gonna go get some chips. Omari, wait! Do you need something? I need some clarity. Why are you acting like this? Acting like what? Cut the act. What do you actually want to tell me? You've been acting extra defensive towards me ever since you got here. I've had it hard my whole life. And I finally have something good and I don't want anything or anyone disturbing it. Since when are you two even friends? So this is about destiny? You really think that I would do something like that? I meant what I said. Omari, oh, you're like a brother to me, man, and I'm happy for you. You know me. I would never try to come in between you two. What's this really about? In these past few days, our lives have turned upside down. Chris, I don't want to lose her. If you ever do, it won't be because of me. I thought you actually knew me well. I guess I was wrong. What can I do for you, sir? Do you remember how I asked you to keep an eye on the student showing potential signs of mutation? Specifically one student named Omari? Yes, sir. What about him? He's committed a personal offense now. He's taken my daughter. Oh. That's so. Yes, I need you to track him down and see where he's taken her. I think I have an idea of where they might be. Where? Tell me now. Well, you know, someone with his ability would think of themselves so much smarter and better than you. Which is obviously not true, Mr. Cypress. Well, of course not. 
So he becomes an absolute betrayer. Mistake words. I heard he had plans to visit some place outside of Manhattan. I'm sure he must have manip manipulated your poor daughter. Taking her somewhere, who knows what happened by now. What <laughs> awful predicament they could have gotten to. Where is she? Where? I'm going to have to deal with him immediately. Spit it out. Surely you must know. Of course, you Prince Cyprus. And you have this role for a reason. Of course. I only want to help you. That's the whole reason we're in this arrangement. After all, <laughs> I do what you want, and you'll give me a position on board. The first student in position of power. Find the school system my way. Yes, I will give you the position. You will be in charge. Very good. Now where were we? I think it might have been the Bronx. Oh, is it Queens? Don't test me now. I can have you expelled just like I'll do to that wretched mutation. Oh, I think it was the Bronx for sure. Very good. Keep this up, and I can see good things in your future. A future where you don't need to be alongside your abnormal peers. I look forward to it, sir. Ian? On the board? This is ridiculous! Preposterous. We've never had anyone so young before. Well, it might be nice to have a young voice for input. Maybe. If it was anyone other than him. I don't trust him. Do you have the address? I can't keep doing this, Ian. Nothing stopped you the first few times. You pressured and guilt tripped me to go along with your stupid shenanigans. Hey, you watch it. Someday I'm going to be the top of the food chain. Controlling things. In the end, you'll be the one begging to get my good graces. This has gone too far. I'm done being accomplice to this. Do your own spine. That's what you signed up for anyways. To be Principal Cypress' minion and feed him information. You know why I'm doing this. And it's not worth it! Power is worth everything. Fine. Go quick. Leave me for all I care. I'll do this myself. That idiot old Mario already trusts me. I just have to use that to my advantage. What in the world? You can't just go live your life manipulating people. <laughs> Look who's talking. You're the one also putting an act in front of the principal's daughter. And her friends. You're the one who's giving me what I need to prevent to deny. You envy them. I envy no one. I never will. This is more than ruining some stupid high school relationship. This is my future. And I don't care who you step forward to reach it. You really lost it, haven't you? Say whatever you want about me. My future's secure. Can you help me? That's in the past now. At least I can own up to my mistake and quit. You should stop where you're ahead to. We both know that's not gonna happen. I have to tell Amari. Then I guess I'll see you around. I hope this was all worth it for you. Can you come back? This has all been so crazy, Amari. I never thought I'd run away from home, let alone disobey my father. To be honest, I don't think I want to go back. I'm really lucky to have all of you supporting me. I'm glad to have you by my side too, Des. I mean, I never asked for this. Nobody would. And yet you have it. And you're still the same person I've always known, the same person I fell in love with. Nothing has changed. You're right. I still have you. Promise me that we'll get through this. That we'll always be together. I promise. Emily, is that you? This is the best place to think to hide. 
I think like who else came along? Personally, I believe this would be amusing. If you can come in now. Destiny Cypress, here. Now! Dad, why are you here? How did you find this place? Well, why don't you ask your reliable friend right here, Ian? It's not going home with you, Father. You most certainly will. I don't know who or what gave you this attitude, but it will stop now. You will not see this horrid male anymore. Horrid male? Don't call him that. You're right. Step away from the mutated vermin right this second. For what? I swear to God, Destiny, come now or I will destroy any future he could wish for. I will end his future if you dare resist once more. You can't do that, Dad. How dare you? How dare I what, girl? How dare I separate my daughter from the pest who tried to steal my own family from me? How dare I put in everything for my own daughter? If you ever actually cared for your daughter, you'd see that Omari and I care for each other. That we love one another. Love. Love with one of those who could easily manipulate you to the point of becoming his plaything. He's not like that. He's better than your prejudice and hatred, and he's more than the villain you paint him to be. Well, then what a shame it'll be when he loses everything. Yes. Don't stay for me. Nori, are you seriously agreeing with him? I don't want you to get in any more trouble. I love you too much for that. Fine. All right, Destiny, that's enough. Let's go. Goodbye, Omari. Goodbye, Destiny. Poor Omari. Stop sympathizing with him, Smith. We all know how it'll go down. Ian was careless, and this will come back to bite him in the- Ian is a smart boy. If Bernard trusts him, so should we. And besides, what could any of these useless teens do about it? Bernard sees and knows all, and now he has destiny under his control. As he should. Ugh, it's getting weird. Now it sounds like you both want to marry him. Ugh. Uh, hush. Here comes Emily. What's got you all teary-eyed? She's gone. What? What do you What do you mean she's gone? Where does she go? Her father took her away. How, how did he even find her? When did this happen? How dare he even? Before you got here, Ian let him here. Seems they've been working together all along. How dare he? Wasn't he supposed to be our friend? What, what could he possibly gain from this? I think I know. What are you doing here? Were you helping them too? Uh, God, no. I was about to tell you guys about something that happened earlier today. What happened? Earlier today, I overheard Ian and Bianca talking. What? What's so weird about that? They were talking about us. About helping us, being our friends. It was all an act. For oh, Christ's sake. Are you kidding me? Bianca was in on it too? They were even reporting back to Principal Cyprus. They practically I think they've signed a type of agreement going on between them. That is so messed up. We should have been more careful. Chris, I'm sorry for the way I treated you. It's Seems okay, like man. You weren't the one I needed to worry about. It's, it's okay, man. I get it. I still can't believe Bianca would get wrapped up in all that. I thought she was better than that. She knows what Principal Cypress is doing is wrong. You can't believe I would get wrapped in what? 
Is it true you've been spying on us this whole time? Wait, please. I was, but I never wanted to. How long? Since, ever since the party, but I quit now. You have to believe me. Why, sh why would you even, why would you even go along with Ian anyway? Is anything even real about you? Ian manipulated me just like he did all of you, yet I've been myself the whole time. Well, partially. But I'm gonna be fully honest now, and if you'll let me, I still like to help. Is there anything Ian told you? Anything that could help us with our plans? Ian didn't share too much, but I'll tell you what I know. Yeah, start talking. <laughs> He plans to gather up info on all of you and destroy a destiny of Mars relationship in the process in order to satisfy Principal Cypress. I feel like he's somehow outsmarting Principal Cypress and using him to get what he wants. What, what does he even want? A full ride to college? Money? Control over the whole school? Yeah, pretty much all of that. He even convinced him to give him a spot on the Board of Education next year. Is that even legal? Talk about power hungry. Well, after being his friend for all these years, I couldn't help but notice and analyze his actions and the peculiar way he interacts with people. I suspect he has the mutation and he's been using his abilities on me. I can feel it. Huh. Then I thought I couldn't get any worse. The irony here is astronomical. It truly is. How did he even get away with all that? He didn't get away with anything yet. He took my destiny away. We can still fix this, though. And I know exactly how. I'll do whatever you guys need me to do. Uh, but as of now, I'm kind of useless. Does Ian know you're here? Not really. Good. And that means we now have the upper hand. Which means you, Bianca, are far from useless. No one is ever useless. Don't call yourself that. What do you need me to do? Talk to Ian again. Uh, apologize to him and feed his ego. Get as much intel as you can on whatever he and Bernard are up to. Yes, and once you're done with that, report back to us immediately. You guys can trust me. mind. Wasn't you and Ian side literally three seconds ago? He's now finally walking towards the light. Let her be. The only light I want to see is that of Bernard's bright smile. Okay, I'm convinced that you purposefully say these things to get a reaction out of me. There's nothing wrong with his smile. Have you seen the man? Smith, stop hating on Bernard. He is a fine looking gentleman. There is nothing gentle about him. Let's just focus on what Bianca's up to right now. Oh, you're starting to sound like me. I knew. What you want help, Bianca? That should make your thoughts to me very clear. I am so sorry about what I said before. I'll support you in anything you do. Ian, I really don't want to lose our friendship. So why would I believe you? I thought really hard about everything you said, and you're right. We can actually make a change in our insignificant lives and actually get somewhere to this. I have so many goals and plans for my future, which are nearly impossible without help from people like Bernard. This is a cool world for people like me and you. 
We have to succeed by any means necessary. Damn you. What do you mean by that? Don't try to deny him now. I've known you. I've known you for years. And then you decide how it's still tomorrow and left? <laughs> no! I need you to know that regardless of everything, I'm here for you, Ian. You clearly have a hard time letting people in. You look exhausted. Please let me help you. Well, I should expect you to come grovel me back. You finally see things my way. As of now, I don't have any sense for you. Wait. Maybe you could run a few errands for Mr. Cypress. Okay, what do I need to do? Uh oh. I need to get you a sound set. Microphone, tea, green tea, especially. Printer, a huge spotlight, a Bernard suit from the dry cleaners. Oh, and get rid of Bernard's rubbish. He's rich. Doesn't he have any other people that could help him? The list is actually way longer than that. What is all of that for anyway? Uh, Destiny's birthday. He ink and a spotlight for a birthday party? Look, I probably shouldn't be talking about this, but Bernard is preparing a kind speech. The board members will be placing their final votes on his policy during the party. He's actually heading to meet them right now. They will vote during the party? Should we really think about it? Genius. I don't ever expect or even have enough time to stop it. Yeah. Genius. Anyway, make sure to give me everything on that list. Text me when you're done. I'll meet you there. Once again, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Mr. Cypress. Hello, Mr. Cypress. What is it you need to propose now? I didn't come to propose any more policies yet. I just need to assure that you will finalize your votes tonight at Destiny's party. We will be there, Bernard, as promised. You will be notified of the results tonight. I'm sure you will vote on what's right. Remember how the safety of our children's lives is in your hands. You have the power to save this slightly flawed system of education. We understand and we will see you very soon, Mr. Cypress. I'm glad we're all on the same page. Hey, Chris, I just wanted to tell you how sorry I am for the way in which I acted the other day. I was petty and immature, and I shouldn't have treated you like that. Listen, you've been nothing but a good friend of me, and I was scared and angry, but that's still not an excuse for the way I treated you, nor is it your fault. Don't worry about it, man. I get it. Just next time, please don't jump to some crazy conclusion before speaking to me about it. Sure. Promise. You good? Of course we are. What'd you find out? Yeah. The board members will make their final vote during Destiny's party. Bernard even had a meeting with them this morning to discuss the details. Wait, they would vote during a party? That's what I said, and that's not all. Ian told me to run some errands for him since Bernard is planning to have this huge announcement in speech. Spotlight and mics are involved. That's all pretty standard stuff for a birthday party, isn't it? 
Ian told me to get rid of his trash. And inside it, I found a speech Bernard had been working on. And he says hateful things regarding people with mutation. Wow. He was really planning on saying all of this stuff under the spotlight. It's like he was ready to celebrate it, like it was some type of achievement or morally right decision. He disgusts me. Wait, guys. We now have solid evidence that proves that Bernard has malicious and extremely biased intentions behind his reformation propositions. All while working alongside someone with the mutation. So Ian really does have it. Oh, I'm sure of it. What are we waiting for, guys? Let's go crash the party. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go. Finally, I have you back home. Away from those delinquents you call friends. You're not delinquents, Dad. This is so typical of you. You always judge people. Those people kidnapped you. No, they didn't. I went on my own free will to get away from you. Oh, my poor destiny. That boy must have used his ability on you. This is exactly why none of them are getting into this party. What? Dad, you can't do that. I can't believe you. Did you honestly think I'd allow them to be near you after what has happened? You're not listening to me. This was all my decision. I'm the one who wanted to get away from you. You've kept me sheltered in this house and kept me tame with monetary possessions and gifts. Can't you see I want more than that? They've been showing me what I can be like out of your control. I took the bus, Dad, and it was so thrilling and new, something you kept me away from right under your thumb my whole life, and I'm tired of it, Dad. I cannot believe how much they've corrupted you out there. My sweet, innocent daughter, what has gotten into you? Those wretched children. I'll make sure they never step within feet of you. I hate you. I will not take any more slander of my own name under my roof. You'll come to your senses eventually, my sweet. But until then, I have a party to run. I'm so glad you're here. I've missed you so much. I've missed you too. You can't even imagine. Yeah. Prince Charming over here was bawling his eyes out for you. She's being sarcastic. Well, not completely. I've missed all of you so much. All right, that's enough love for tonight. Are we all ready? Yeah, we know what to do. Wait, I wanna help too. My dad just told me that none of you are invited. So if you go in through the front, they'll just kick you out. You guys should stay in here and then come out when it's time. Yeah, I'm sure we could all fit into your walk-in closet. I wish I could help more, though. As of right now, the best thing you could do is pretend to be Bernard's perfectly obedient daughter. He can't suspect that anything is going on here. I agree with Chris, but there's an inner piece just in case you need to get in contact with us at any point. All right, guys. You know what to do? Destiny, are you almost ready? The guest should be here any moment now. I can't believe he's using his only daughter, his favorite daughter's birthday party for public image. He sounds so filled with glee after pulling me away from you. If you can get through tonight, we'll soon you be reunited. You're right. I'm doing this for us. Um, I don't mean to ruin your moment, but your dad is still outside. Um, I'm ready, Dad. Um, I'll be out in a second. Come in, Blue Whale. Can you hear me? Crystal clear, I feel like I'm... Blue Whale, Yellow Bird, Pink Flamingo. Are we all for a go? We're, We're ready, ready. ready. Okay. Oh, good evening, ma'am. Are you enjoying this party? Mm, why, yes, I am. Just like how you enjoy discriminating against people based off of your bias and ignorant perception of them, right? Excuse me? 
what gives you the right to speak to me in such a way? And what gives you the right to segregate and get rid of my friends? Do you think that being a person in a position of power gives you the right to act as a dictator would? I have never acted nor claimed to be that way. Stop trying to deny your involvement in this preposterous idea. You're a powerful woman. Stop giving it to men's ideas. You can make far better choices than men like Bernard propose. You have far more power than him, and today you have the opportunity to change that vote. It's not too late to change, and you know it. You remind me a lot of my younger self. I used to think I could rule the world. You still can. One board member down, two more to go. Good evening, sir. Have you considered the effect of your vote tonight? Yes, I have, young man. But have you really? Have you considered how it affects those that it's aimed at? What if it was your kid who was being, being segregated and discriminated against? Those are all valid questions, but there are greater matters at hand right now, like the safety of our students. What about the safety of the students that you're segregating? Are they not important as well? You've brought up valid arguments, but even if I wanted to change my mind, most of the board has already made a decision. Even if they've already decided, your vote still matters and it can impact theirs more than you think. I will strongly consider everything you've said, but first I need to speak with some of my colleagues. I can't promise you anything. Thank you for your time, sir. I'll talk Omar, I can get through to them now. Thank you all once for, sorry. Thank you all once more for coming to my daughter's party. Unfortunately, she felt faint and went to her room for, for the night, but the party's not over. May I have your attention, ladies and gentlemen of this party. My fellow board members and I have come to give the announcement of, to give our answers at host of this party, Principal Cypress's reformation policies. Indeed we have, and I would like to allow my fellow member, Miss Andrews, to take the stage to announce it. Thank you for the stage, Smith. After careful consideration, I'd like to announce that the board has decided to my sincerest apologies, esteemed board members, but I'd like to floor phone for the moment. I'd like for you to know what went on while the principal awaited your decision and what certain actions he took that aren't respectable by any means. Do you believe he has done anything worth wavering any decisions we've made? I do believe you will question your support for it, if any left, after all I tell you. First, I would like to bring light onto a systematic targeting against one of the transfer students with the ability in question. That would be me. And the hypocrisy of him calling me a creature and inhuman, all while working alongside someone with the same ability. Bianca, can you join me here for a moment? How can I help you, Amari? I need you to tell me what happened during your time working with you. He, he manipulated me. He made me act as an ally to you and destiny, only to gather information to use against you. It felt like I had no control over my body. Do you have any evidence of this affiliation with you? Actually, Amari, I have proof. Here's a video of Ian and, Ian and Bianca arguing over the morality of their plan. If you watch, Ian seems to mention some sort of ulterior motive. As if it couldn't get any worse, there's still more to be revealed. Mr. Cypress, can you join me here for a moment? Why on earth would I entertain this any longer? 
who are you to interrupt the members of the board as they come to a very important decision? Entertain it for a little longer, Principal Cypress. If there's nothing to hide, then I don't see any concern in what the boy has to show. Mr. Cypress, do you mind reading this little draft of a speech I have here? That's Principal Cypress to you. I don't know where you came up with such vile words. I cannot read this. For heaven's sake, Principal Cypress, read the damn paper. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending this event tonight. I've come to bring attention to a problem that is approaching our schools. Some would call them transfer students, but dare I say they are parasites. Uh, this is absurd. What is this supposed to prove? You wrote that, Bernard. Don't lie. I did not. I've entertained your little show for far too long. What, did you want footage of me calling your kind monsters to blow it out of context? Not at all, Principal Cypress. But you just saw me use a way to force the truth to come to light. And I severely doubt you or the board members would like to see me resort to that. Is that a threat? Threat or not, we've seen quite enough. You, you can't believe him. I wouldn't have done all this for for some measly personal vendetta against a high schooler? Then prove us wrong. Let the boy use his ability to make you tell the truth. Fine, I'll allow it. But after you're proven wrong, Omari, I will personally be expelling you due to this grand interruption and waste of time. Prince of the Cypress. Would you mind telling me who wrote this draft I have here? By right, which your words are considered vile? Those words, they're not vile. Nothing I've ever done or said is vile. I proudly wrote it all with you in mind. Tell them, Omari. Did you forget to mention how you kidnapped my own daughter from this house in the dead of the night while I was sleeping? I never kidnapped her. You claimed I manipulated and controlled her. I did anything and everything to her, according to you. Yet you refused to come to terms that we simply loved each other. My wonderful daughter would never fall for something like you. She'd never see anything worth loving in something like you. She could never? Or you could never come to terms with her loving someone you refused to see the humanity in. If you loved one another, you wouldn't have stolen her from me. No, Mr. Cypress. If you would have just took a moment to understand, then you realize I'm not a monster. I'm a pure, compassionate human being. I was raised in the ghetto, but I'm more than my neighborhood and I'm more than my condition. I love the arts. I love my school and I love your daughter, sir. There is no love in you. There is no love when it comes to your kind. All you do is manipulate. Like that self-righteous Ian who's just lost any opportunity I could have offered him if he hadn't gotten cocky and didn't focus on himself. Ian, I know you're out there. Come on out, you piece of... That's quite enough, Bernard. I've heard quite enough of your sob story gone wrong with vengeance. We've come to our final decision. Please, I ask you to reconsider. Use Ian as an example. These mutations are a problem. They're not normal, nor should anything like them ever be normalized. It's ridiculous that we're still- Enough! He's not a monster. You're the monster. Painting anyone with darker skin than us as heartless and a criminal. Yes. I've had enough. No, Mr. Cypress, I've had enough. I've had enough of you making me seem like some inhuman demon that only thinks of themselves. As someone who takes advantage and manipulates everything and anything that breathes. That's what you are. You are mutated, you are not a human. You never will be normal, boy. Enough. Enough. Bernard, Ian, will you two please step forward?
You call for Ms. Williams? Yes, I did. Firstly, Andrews, would you care to give her the announcement of our conclusion? Gladly. Bernard, we have unanimously decided to reject your policy. And Smith, would you like to tell these two what they'll be facing for their crimes? With pleasure. Bernard, for abuse of your power, systematic targeting and threatening of past survivors and victims, as well as spying on your students, you will be removed from your position as principal within the coming weeks. And Ian, for the manipulation and extortion of other students for your own personal gain, you are now removed from your spot at Midtown Prep. No, no, no. You can't do that. Student Council President, I'm about to graduate. That's absurd. We can do whatever we feel is necessary. This seems to fit the bill. Well, you should have thought of that before you decided to help in this wild scheme. Can you believe him? Acting like he doesn't deserve this. Shameful, really. We did it. <laughs> I knew we would. Happy birthday, Des. Oh my god. Mari, this is gorgeous. Wow, you really are Prince Charming, huh? <laughs> oh, I hope we get a better principal this time. Probably a woman who knows what she's doing. You and me both. Maybe I can enjoy school more now that I don't need to worry about Ian. Oof. Good riddance to him, too. That guy was a nut job. Tell me about it. I'm just relieved things turned out the way they did. Thank you guys for trusting me again and bringing this whole situation to light. Well. Now that that's behind us, we can finally move on. Move on? If anything, this has just inspired me to keep going. Keep going? Fighting racial injustice, getting rid of the stereotypes for survivors and making things equal? I like where you're going with this. We did do a good thing here. It was messy, but... We did succeed at the end. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go review some more hidden truths. <laughs>